Next up, while corn rootworm beetles began emerging during late June and early July in southeastern and south central parts of the state, scouting is still very much recommended since the pests might not have emerged yet in northeast and western Nebraska. Market Journal's Bill Dodd caught up with extension entomologist Julie Peterson to find out more. Western corn rootworms can pose the threat of an economic infestation to corn growers across the state. These beetles lay eggs in the field that will overwinter. Upon hatching, these pests can feed upon corn roots and later on the silks, which could negatively impact the corn's pollination cycle. While we know the rootworm beetle has been emerging throughout the state over the last couple of months, weekly scouting of adult rootworm beetles is still highly recommended. Uh, so in Nebraska, we do have two different species of corn rootworm beetle. Uh, the western corn rootworm is really common throughout the state. It's a small yellow beetle with black stripes on it. Um, we do also have the northern corn rootworm. It's sort of a yellow green color, um, but both of those beetles are out in cornfields right now. Um, the life cycle is that the larvae feed on the roots um, in spring and early summer. And then usually around uh, the first part of July, we start to see adult beetles emerging. Um, we will continue to see more beetles emerging um, from the ground um, all the way into August, sometimes even a little bit later than that. So this is the right time of year um, to be going out and scouting and looking for these insects um, out in your cornfield. Orson Welles once said, what's happening now is what happened before, and often what's going to happen again sometime or another. These words ring true in this case, as typically the southeastern and south central areas of the state see emergence of the beetles sometime before they're seen in the northeast and western areas of Nebraska, giving producers in those parts of the state a bit of an early warning of what's to come. We usually accumulate more degree days um, in our more eastern and southeastern parts of the state of Nebraska. So usually west central um, Nebraska is going to be maybe five or six or seven days behind. Um, so for a lot of different things, including rootworm beetle emergence and for some of our other insect issues, we're kind of looking sometimes to see what's happening further east and further south in the state to help inform what's gonna be happening then soon um, a little bit further to the west. If these beetles are spotted in your fields while scouting, you may be inclined to take action immediately. However, Julie tells me at this point in the season, you should be thinking ahead to next spring. What we're thinking about more with the beetles that are in the field is that they are laying eggs there. Those eggs are going to spend the winter in the cornfield, and then next spring, the larvae will hatch out, and they'll be doing feeding damage to um, the crop, if it's corn, uh, that's planted in that field next year. So decisions now for those beetles are really about managing the pest population that you will have in next year's crop, not uh, for this year. It's recommended to examine at least 50 plants per field. Furthermore, you should make sure that sampled plants are several paces apart to ensure that the examination of one plant doesn't motivate the beetles to move to the next plant to be sampled. You should also make sure to examine the entire plant as rootworm beetles will hide behind leaf sheaths and in the silks. If detected within certain thresholds, there are a variety of ways to approach mitigating the problem next spring. Now, if you do have high enough beetle populations to be at or above those thresholds on the table, um, there's a few things you should consider for next year. Um, you could rotate out of corn, grow uh, soybeans or another non-corn um, crop that will not be targeted by the rootworm. Um, as long as you manage your volunteer corn in that field, that should dramatically decrease the rootworm populations there. Um, you can also consider planting a pyramided transgenic corn. So this would be a um, BT corn that has the CRY3435 um, effective BT protein in it. Um, you also could consider planting a non-BT corn but using an insecticide in the furrow at planting time. Um, of course, you could also consider um, spraying uh, for those rootworm beetles in this current year to knock down their populations and reduce further eggs from being laid in the field. When it comes to spraying for these pests, it's been noted that these beetles have shown some documented resistance to some pyrethroid insecticides. Furthermore, 
It is highly advisable to continue scouting fields weekly, as maturing fields may be prone to rootworm beetles migrating into fields with new silks available and may need another round of treatment. Yeah, so we have been doing some research here at the University of Nebraska in the last several years looking at some um, issues with resistance for western corn rootworm in particular. Um, and we have found, um, especially in the southwest part of the state and then the west central part of the state, that our pyrethroid insecticides are really um, having resistance from the western corn rootworm beetles. Um, this is actually from both the adult beetles as well as from the larvae as well. So it's important to pay attention to the um, active ingredient of the insecticide and also the class. So the pyrethroids are the class uh, 3A insecticides. Um, this would include products like Brigade um, as well as some of our at plant products like Capture and Force. So it's really important to think about um, uh, rotating away from those pyrethroids using other modes of action, other active ingredients of insecticides in order to get really effective control with your insecticides. If fields have been scouted and treated properly, these pests should have a minimal impact on your overall yield come harvest. Reporting for Market Journal, I'm Bill Dodd.